Hey you, so on this video, Hot or Not Coin series, I'm just going to give my thoughts and personal opinions and exactly that, my own personal opinions, nothing, absolutely nothing definitive on a few of the modern coins that I'm collecting and the series that I'm interested in or not interested in and just say whether I find them hot or not and just any little gripes I personally have with the series in question. So it would be fantastic if you can either let me know in the comments what you think of what I think of these or go ahead and add any coin series that you may think are hot or you don't know why the hell they was bothered to get minted so I'm gonna break straight into this so uh, starting straight at the top of a series that I did have some vested interest in it's going to be the Royal Mint Luna series so this will be series number one now this series here I think it did have some promise but once you're talking about a lunar coin, I mean, every mint and their mother has a lunar series range now. And I think after seeing the success of the Perth Mint, or maybe not, I couldn't tell you whether they was the first to do it. But I do know personally that they have done it the best, I mean, worldwide. The Royal Mint was inevitably going to jump on top and jump on board with it. And this is their offering. Now, some of the designs that they've done, I did find nice. And this horse was one of them. I did like the monkey design that they also done. But... It kind of went downhill from there, in my own opinion. I didn't think they could do any worse than seeing the new recent dog, time of releasing this video. I mean, it's pretty bad. So, But I'm not actively collecting this series. But one important thing to mention here and to remember, as I'm going to be bringing it up in the next series, is that on their BU range, they had a capped mintage. So they had a cap mintage on their BU range, and they also have a proof range where they have a limited mintage also so they they done the whole opposite style they incorporate the eights in their bu range i don't know what they're currently at. i know i believe these were 388 so 388,000. but you know i just personally think it hasn't taken off as well as it could have there's a more interest in lunar series for a lot of individuals to be involved in. Now, I'm not saying that I don't know whether these are reselling too well, but they are selling well enough for the Royal Mint to still keep on bumping them out and putting a lot of publicity behind it. But from what I've seen in individuals I spoke with, it's not the best coin, but especially when you're talking in bulk. But if, you know, if you're completing a series or anything or not, I can't see it being too bad. But for me, it's a not. But, you know, there's definitely potential there for an individual just filling up i don't know coin slots so that's going to be the first series that we're looking into and that's the royal mint lunar series so it's a mediocre not for me so coming straight in again and another offering from the royal mint what's going to be the queen's b series now this series is hot in my opinion very hot the designs are all stunning they're all very nice designs whereas with the royal mint lunar series i can tell you i find some designs ugly on this i just find more designs better than the others so i don't really think they've done any bad designs as of yet but i still think they've done well they've got jody clark all over this the designs are great <laughs> biggest gripe now i have said i think this is a hot series is the thing that's let this series down I, and I, I can't i don't know what it will do in the future what we'll have to offer in the future is that they decided to go the typical real mint greedy route on this one in that none of the bu offerings came with a capped mintage and I, as i just pointed out on the roman luna series they have proved that they can do that and they can start off like that but what we've seen with this is that they started off with the bu range it done well and it was well enough for them to say well look we're going to keep this because it's n the Royal Mint are infamous and it's nothing new. They will do these, them not sell too well, and then just slap a cap mintage on it and say, okay, we've seen they've done it with the current um, landmarks release that they've done, and even with the current anniversaries. So they are capping coins now, bringing them out in century boxes. But I just feel even they know this is the best offering they have. And they've just gone the route of absolutely being opportunistic and milking it to death and decided to have the entire BU range on an unlimited. So that's the two ounce. I believe they've currently got the 10 ounce also. They're, I'm not sure they do the five. So they have the two ounce and the 10 ounce on an unlimited mintage. Now that's not a lot of coins in the range. It would have been nothing for them to cap these. I think if anything, they're not capping the BU. You know, I didn't have this opinion to begin with, but as time's gone by, them not capping the BU prevented and stopped this series from being an absolute winner 
worldwide it's stunning as it is absolute stunning designs not saying it's doing bad but they prevented it from going on to legendary status from greed in my opinion the proofs that they don't do a two ounce in so i believe they have the one ounce and the other offerings are doing okay you know i, I don't pick them up i pick up the proof quarter ounce gold coins the mintages are okay but you know some of the bu range where the real play is because you're getting low and sometimes can sell for very high a lot of their proof offerings from cirruses tend to track the same way so you know they, they can be resold for a profit but nothing you know orgasmic so that's going to be the queen's b series once again another design and series that i think through the Royal Mint's greed, I prevented this series from going on to be absolutely legendary. I'm sure they're going to find a way to recycle this series, but it's a very unique series they could have done so much with. But I, I guess what they intend to do is just milk it to the bone. I've even heard they're bringing out a copper range and the likes of, so it's a bit of a shame there. But the next series that I'm involved in, and many others are also, is going to be the Lumina series too. So let's get this out. So it's game. So when we're talking lunar coins, as I mentioned, every mint in their mower has one, but I believe it's this mint that they're chasing. The Perth mint offered a creme de la creme when it comes to lunar coins. Their coins, and I, I am saying that this series is hot, offer the best in terms that you can put some money in there and know that you're going to be able to sell your coin at some type of a profit. Maybe not a big one, but it will be a profit at a later date. And I see that dwindling a little. You know, I don't think the more and more Lunar series that come out are going to really, you know, affect and kill this. It's just that I think they're killing it when you've got Gilded, Specials, Half Ounce, One Ounce, Two Ounce, Five Ounce, Ten Ounce, Kilos. As I've mentioned before, and their sales are increasing, which is great for the minute and great for individuals that want the coins. But, you know, not so great if you want to be able to sell it for a large profit at a later date. You know, we're on Luna Series 2 now at the tail end. Got one more design and it's Luna Series 3. Um, it ain't going away no time soon. So will Luna Series 3 have the Luna Series 2 coins increase? Because there's going to be more than enough out there of individual wants to start getting picky. The last thing you want to be is on eBay competing with a guy that's more than willing to undercut you. And there are more than enough out there. So, you know, I think it's a great series, a hot series. I don't think there's that as much potential as I used to because, you know, as I've mentioned before, a lot more money is going into other areas. Whereas before, I think that also didn't help with a series that has a lot of motifs out there. So, you know, Lunar Series 2 still definitely helps. Still a great place to put your money if you're going to be talking Lunar coins. That other mint may have a better looking coin, but it may not hold up as well as a Lunar Series Perth Mint coin. So getting straight into this on the next, we're going to be looking at the Kookaburra coins. Now, once again, another series I think is hot. The difference with the Kookaburras is that we're talking about a series that can technically go on forever. Whereas with the Lunar Series and the two Lunar Series I previously showed and the Queen's Bee Series technically would have to be a medal depending on how they recycle it but with this here they just need to keep on putting out a new kookaburra design it can go on forever there's no 12 year recycle period so uh, very nice so far so good some designs are a lot stronger than others some designs hold up better than others there's a lot of articles out there if you want to see which and designs you want to be holding on to and which designs hold their value well a bit of a sleeper is this 2005 but you know different places are saying different things but i think the kookaburras are good they're very nice coins they're doing well i'm still heavily on board with them at some point they did have a few more coins in the range and i'm not sure they've done a gold but they've done an anniversary version of the gold i think if anything these coins just need a breath of fresh air blown into them so it'd be great if the Perth Mint would come out and, I don't know, maybe doing some more size. They done a half ounce at one point, the two ounce and the like. So I believe now you just get the one ounce, the kilo and the ten ounce. So it'd be great if they could do something. Well, it'd, be, it'd, it'd add a lot of buzz if they had a gold or something got the likes of or just backdated and introduced the two ounce again. But so far, so good. I haven't picked up in quantity um, since the 2016s i don't think i will it have to be an absolute stunning design but a little while back i worked on backdating and trying to find a lot of the more hotter ones older ones in, in quantity 
and I was able to do that. So I've, I've filled my boots with these, but I'm definitely on board with the kookaburras. They do sell on for profits. It's the best bird cirrus out there, in my opinion. So if you're looking for something, you may not like them, but certain motifs definitely hold their value and it's a good place to put your money. They don't sink in value like some of the other coins out there. So I still think very, very strong. Another coin that can technically go on forever. You know, the Perfman's just introduced the swan, so it may be another bird to keep your eye on. So. And after that, we're going to be looking at this Rwandan Cirrus. Now, I've already mentioned what I feel about this Cirrus. I'm going to be talking about the, the, the mint as a whole. So they do the nautical ounce and the lunar coins. I think very nice breath of fresh air when we're talking something with a lunar offering. It, it was a slow burner, but it's picked up a lot of traction. I think they're doing absolutely fantastic. Can they knock the perf off the front? You know, they've still got to go through this first 12-year cycle, but definitely a lot of potential. I doubt they'll knock the perf off, but currently, time of release, and this one, the proof, recently sold on eBay for a 70, I believe, for around £350 sterling. So, as you can see, there's definitely a lot of investment potential with these coins. They've got off to a strong start. The nautical ounce have got off to an even stronger start. So, if they keep up this current model they've got going on, there's a lot of potential in these coins, you know. I don't see them dying off. The designs are real funky and different. Definitely something wholly different. So it's a very nice offering. I'm, I'm, on, I'm on board with this series all the way. Definitely a very hot series. So just a few honorary mentions that I don't have on display here. That'd be stuff from the, what are we talking about now? The Royal Canadian Mint now. I don't really collect any of their stuff for obvious reasons regarding the spotting. I have heard a lot of their proof coins don't really suffer from the spotting situation so maybe that can be something for individuals now when i'm mentioning these coins it's just because i'm not picking them up or i write them off does that does not mean that they don't go on to sell well i mean for every individual that's going to tell you you know it's a crap coin you're going to find an individual that's going to tell you they're able to sell them at a profit on the secondary market so it's for each individual to really go in and test the waters themselves. This is just my own personal opinion on coins that have worked out well for me and individuals that I may know, but it doesn't mean that the other coins are doing bad. In fact, it can offer an opportunity, whereas everybody's looking one way and if you decide to go in on that coin there, it could be doing great things for you. With the private mints on the honorary mentions, we're looking at mints like the, what's it, the Pubjoy Mint and even the Scottsdale Mint. Of the two private mints, these are the only two that make coins that have caught my attention. So we could be talking about the Roman, you know, Scottsdale, there are a whole range of coins from the, the Egyptian range, the King Tuts, the Leopards, the uh, Maori, I've got that wrong, but you know, the Pubjoys have got the Archangels and the likes of, they do good stuff. Nothing that's really caught my fancy as of yet, but you know, in time, you know, they, they are pumping out some fantastic coins, but once again, nothing that's caught my fancy, but some individuals may have had fantastic results of them on the secondary market. And we got the Bank of New Mexico, so the guys that bring us the Libertads. As I've mentioned in the past, it's a little too much of the same thing for me. I do have a few coins in the range, but nothing called volume no more. And I have sold off a lot of the stuff that I did have. Nice coins, I do know they do okay on the secondary market, but once again, it's too much of the same thing for me. Even if they was to change the design, I've no doubt they'd keep the same design for the next 15 or 10 years. I'd need something a little bit more, you know, changing a lot more regularly. And then we've got the China Mint with the pandas. Too risky for my liking. Not very nice coins, some of the designs. Um, if you was collecting them, I'd recommend the old years. But, you know, with the high mintages and just the risk that comes along with it, it's not really my flavor so that's just my lists of hot and not and what i'm currently collecting and what i think of them and any gripes that i may have of them would be fantastic if you could leave in the comments either whether you agree or disagree with my selection right there or any selections that you may want to add on to that so don't forget to go and follow me on those platforms that i've left on the description hey i love it let me know what you think of this video go ahead and subscribe if you haven't done so already and i'll catch you guys on the rebound